One day, the enemy smashed through the defenses of the American First Army on a 45-mile front and was biting deep into Luxembourg and Belgium. In 24 hours, the initiative changed hands and the German army, which had put the word Blitzkrieg into all languages, unleashed its desperate offensive. They had picked a time when the weather prevented us from using the air weapon, the weapon in which we decisively outweigh them. shown for the first time. It was captured from a German cameraman. He had taken it so that the German home front might gloat over the evidence of the success of Rundstedt's attack. In August, it was German convoys that were caught like this along the French roads. Now it was our convoys, ruined, burning where they'd been overrun. The sweat and iron of Detroit and Pittsburgh came the wreckage of Malmedy and saint vite We lost more than jeeps and half-tracks, tires and shells, tanks and guns. We lost men, 78,000 in dead, wounded. German smoked camels and Chesterfields robbed from American dead. And the Nazi cameraman filmed it to amuse and reassure the moviegoers of Munich and Berlin. Men who had not retreated since their arrival in Europe plodded back along the mean roads of winter Belgium. Convoys of trucks streamed to the rear with supplies that had been painstakingly accumulated at forward dumps. Supplies that could not be moved were put to the torch. Millions of man hours of work to be put in all over again. To stop counterattacks, huge new reserves of supplies are called for. That is how a war is, wasteful, unpredictable, uncertain, dangerous, demanding constant wariness, constant preparation for the worst, a constant and unflagging spirit in the face of all alarms and disasters. Gallant American units, surrounded and cut off, fought in a sea of enemy armor. Anti-aircraft guns were fired point-blank as anti-tank guns until they were overrun. Bakers, quartermaster and line of communications troops picked up their rifles and fought tenaciously against Nazi columns. The weather cleared and the Air Force took to the skies to bomb and strafe and fight the rejuvenated Luftwaffe to the ground. the spearhead stopped, the Nazi columns contained and thrown back by men who had flung themselves into the breach. In the wild gamble of war, a momentary equilibrium had been gained. The cost had been great, and there were no guarantees being issued on engraved paper on the Western Front that the time of counterattacks was over. Nor, despite the great victories in the Pacific, were there guarantees being issued that there would be no counterattacks against the many islands we'd won back from the Japs?